Okay, hello. This is the first video in the sixth learning module called Sinusoids and Phasers. So this particular video is a review of sinusoids. Um, so we use sinusoids primarily when we talk about AC sources. There are other types of AC sources, and which stands for alternating current, which just means that the source changes in time. Sinusoids specifically are useful um, in this context, though, because um, AC is how our power companies deliver um, power to us, but also any arbitrarily complicated time-varying signal can be represented by summation of sinusoids. Okay, this is, we'll, we'll actually get to this a little bit later, but just to kind of give you some heads up. You can take any arbitrarily complicated signal, music, video, voice, etc., and represent them by a summation or superposition of sinusoids. This really sets the stage for modern um, communications and signal analysis. Um, you, you may come across something called Laplace or Fourier analysis, um, and it, enabling modern communications fundamentally. So sinusoids are, are really one of the most important fundamental concepts that we're gonna encounter. So the sinusoid will be represented by the same source that we've been talking about in the past, um, it's just, again, a time-varying signal that is repetitive in nature. So let's define some terms related to the sinusoids. So if I let the function v is a function of time equal to v sub m cosine omega t plus theta. Vm is what we call the amplitude of the sinusoid. So that is this value here in blue. Omega is the angular frequency, so this is in units radians per second, so if we multiply radians per second times time, this quantity, omega t, is in units of radians. So recall that a sinusoid repeats every two pi radians. Okay, so cosine x is the same thing as cosine x, plus or minus two pi. So from this, we can also define the period, capital T, of the sinusoid. So if we start at time zero here with a sine, one period would be where it um, repeats after T seconds. And again, multiply this by omega, and you get exactly two pi radians. So a sinusoid repeats every omega T, or two pi radians. Um, from this, we can also define what we call cyclic frequency is just one over the period, and that would be um, variable f in units of hertz. And this can be thought of as representing the number of cycles encountered per second. And the final argument of the sinusoid is theta. Sometimes um, we also use the symbol phi representing this. And this is what we refer to as the phase angle of the sinusoid. Note that we'll, we will usually be quantifying this um, variable in units of degrees, not radians. So while omega is given as radians per second, theta is given as degrees. So if we want to ever resolve a particular sinusoid at time t, we need to either convert omega t into degrees or the theta into radians per second. Very important to note. Put a big star by that. So the way to think about phase angle is that it specifies the how far the sinusoid is shifted along the time or phase axis. So if we, we have a 360 degree phase angle, this is two pi radians of phase shift. 180 degree phase angle would be pi radians of phase shift. We can think of this as positive phase angle being a shift left in terms of the phase axis or the time axis. So that brings us to some useful identities. Cosine and sine can actually be related together. In fact, they're the exact same function. They just have exactly a 90 degree phase shift between them. So cosine is a sine plus a 90 degree phase shift. Likewise, a sine is just a cosine with a negative 90 degree phase shift. And then of course, plus or minus 180 degrees in either is just the negative of, of the original. 
So let's visualize that. So if we take the general form of the sinusoid, Vm cosine omega t plus theta, and plot that, shown here in black. We're looking at a cosine, in this particular case, with a phase shift of zero, since a cosine at uh, zero t is, is equal to one. So that would represent the, the cosine with a zero degree phase shift. If we have cosine uh, plus a theta phase shift, we see that it's a shift leftward in, in the omega t axis, where theta is the shift by uh, theta radians. In this case, we, s we can relate the, the curve in red to the curve in black by saying that the curve in red leads the curve in black by theta degrees. Likewise, we could say that the black curve lags the red curve by theta degrees. So this concept of leading and lagging, um, we can any two signals can be described with either of these. So leading again means the, the further left in the axis. You can kind of think of it as an earlier in time if we convert this to a time axis. And the black is being later in time or lagging the one in red. But since these are repetitive signals, we can actually refer to either of them as being leading or lagging. Okay, this is just a, such a way that we can describe them using English. Let's explore that a little bit further. So firstly, when comparing sine and cosine. So as I mentioned before, they're the same function, they just have a 90 degree phase shift. So if we plot the cosine in red and the sine in black, we can see that we can relate them to one another by the definitions of leading and lagging. We know that the difference is exactly 90 degrees. We can say cosine leads sine, because we notice that it's just a sine with a shift leftward. Okay, so cosine leads sine by 90 degrees, but we could also say sine lags cosine by 90 degrees. Okay. So based on this, let's do an example. Let's convert the function Vm cosine 5t plus 10 degrees to a sine. So if we do that, noting that cosine leads sine by 90, or sine lags cosine by 90. If we are converting to a, um, if we are converting a cosine to a sine, then we're going to add 90 degrees to the argument, such that Vm cosine 5t plus 10 is equivalent to Vm sine 5t plus 100. Another way to compare these sinusoids is by plotting on the phase axes. So, we, when, we, when we do this, we call the x-axis, the zero to, uh, positive x-axis, zero degrees, the positive y-axis, 90 degrees, such that we're considering these sinusoids as vectors that can rotate around this axis. So on this, I'm, I'm drawing the unit circle and black dotted lines here. So if I take two sinusoids, for example, V1 as being Vm1 cosine 5t minus 260 and represent them as a vector, all I need is the magnitude, Vm1 being the length of this vector, the amplitude, and the phase shift, in this case negative 260 degrees. So to represent negative 260 degrees, we represent in the negative direction, so that's going clockwise around this, 260 degrees. So we note that this is the same thing as positive 100 degrees, so we could call this Let's just go ahead and write it equal to um, Vm1 cosine 5t plus 100 degrees. So these are equivalent definitions. Okay, so if we take the signal V2 as being Vm2 cosine minus 5t minus 30 degrees, that would be represented by this vector, red vector. So now that we have them both plotted on the same plane, note that we can only do this if the radial, the angular frequencies are equivalent. So in this case, both five radians per second. You can kind of think of this as these vectors are rotating around this plane at a rate of five radians per second. So we're accumulating phase at a rate of five radians every second around this, kind of like the way a clock works but both of them are going through this at the same rate. Therefore, they're always separated by this exact same phase angle. So this only works when 
the sinusoids are uh, with the same frequency. So now based on this, let's look at the difference in phases. You see that we can we have a 130 degree phase shift in this direction. We also have a 230 degree phase shift if we can compare them this direction. So let's consider that as leading or lagging. And remember, a positive phase shift was what we referred to as leading. So in other words, if I say that VM1 um, is 130 degrees ahead of V2, we say that that's leading. So V1 leads V2 by 130 degrees. If we keep going around that, we can also say V2 leads V1 by 230 degrees. If we go around the opposite direction in this, this um, uh, in other words, clockwise, we can say V V1 uh, lags V2 by 230 degrees, or V2 lags V1 by 130 degrees. So we have four ways to describe this relationship. These are all equivalent. You can use any of these. Um, it's just kind of important to understand uh, how to relate the word lead and lag to a physical representation of the difference between the two.